Hello and welcome to 30 Ways to Grow Your Email List. I'm really excited to talk to you about this today because I'm asked all the time about this topic and quite often people need a bit of inspiration to find ways that they can grow their list. So today I'm hoping to inspire you to think of additional ways that you can grow your list. I've got 30 for you, but I'm sure you'll think of, of more as we go along. So in the next 50-ish uh, minutes, what we'll do is we'll cover the reason why someone should join your list. So what, what is it, what, what are you giving them that they would join your list? The 30 things that you can do right after this webinar to get started. Um, I, you know, maybe all 30 things aren't appropriate for you, but um, we'll look at those 30 ways that you can uh, really get started on growing your list. Um, the next thing that we'll do is look at um, a little bit, I'll talk a little bit about GDPR. Um, now, remember, I'm not a legal expert, so this isn't legal advice. It's it's what I understand uh, GDPR to be. Um, if you need help, the ICO, the Information Commissioner's Office, will be able to help you with any specific questions. They've got a lot of information on their website and you can also phone them up and they'll help you. Um, I know it says it's uh, Stephanie Burns talking. Uh, it is Minal, I assure you, I was on webcam earlier. Um, I get to use this webinar platform because I am uh, an accredited constant contact partner. Unfortunately, I can't set myself up as the presenter, so you'll see Stephanie is talking. But it is me, Minal. If you've heard me before, you'll recognize me. Um, so rest assured, this is all me. Uh, so. Lastly, what I'll do is I'll go through any of the questions that you've typed in the questions box at the end. So do remember to type those questions as we go along. So before we kick off, um, I know that there are a lot of people who registered for this webinar who don't actually know me. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've been a small business owner for three years. Um, I run Marketing by me now. It is just me in the business. Um, I am still on the webcam. Oh, let me turn myself off. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> so I've been a small business owner for three years. And before that, I was head of marketing at uh, Constant Contact for their UK office. Constant Contact is an email marketing company. I've already just mentioned them. So I've been using and testing and experimenting with email marketing for over seven years. Some of the slides that we're going to go through will show you features that are available in Constant Contact. Now, this is not a big sales pitch for them. These are all tips that you can take away and use um, after this webinar. I don't advocate for them because I used to work for them. I do it because I truly believe it's the best platform for small businesses like us. I've tried other providers. I, I do it all the time to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything. And I keep coming back to Constant Contact and I use them for my business because they make my life easier. So that's not to say that the tips that I go through, you can only use them with Constant Contact. If you have an email service provider that you're happy with, you'll be able to use absolutely most of these things regardless. OK, but do make a note of the features, the Constant Contact features you'd like to use. Because as I mentioned, everyone who attends this webinar live is going to be given 60 days to try them for free. So finally, you can connect with me uh, on all the places on this slide. I'd love for you to come and find me on your network of choice. Um, if you do send me a personal LinkedIn invitation, just let me know that you attended this webinar so that I can um, recognize you because I get a lot of invitations from people that I don't know. OK, let's get started. So before we kick off, what I'm going to just do is make sure that you're happy with what email marketing is. So at its base level, it's about delivering professional communications. It's making sure that you get really nicely branded emails with no grammatical or spelling errors into the inbox. And you're sending this to an interested audience. And this is really important 
because someone can really easily report your emails as spam or they can delete them. And you need to make sure that those individuals that you add to your email list expect to receive that communication from you. It's setting that expect expectation is really, really important. Um, it, the email will contain information that the recipient finds valuable. So just because you have permission to communicate to someone doesn't mean that you're going to be successful with email marketing. You also need to send the right information to the right people on your email list. And knowing what your audience wants can be tough, right? We're not mind readers. So, you know, you have to want, you have to think, figure out, you know, is it something promotional? Are they after offers? Do they want educational staff? Um, is it a combination of both those things? If you don't know, and I don't always know, and that's why every year I do a survey, I survey my list to understand more about what they want. So send them a survey, ask them on social media. Um, if you have a team, you know, get your staff to ask people what they want when they interact with them. So don't make assumptions and, and figure out what it is that they would find valuable. And the last thing that you need to make sure that you do is that that email looks great in any inbox because over 50% of emails are now open and read on mobile devices. And you need to create an email that looks good on a laptop, a desktop, a la laptop, a tablet and a mobile phone, right? So any, you know, all, all the really good email service providers, and I think all of them do it now, they provide uh, mobile responsive templates. The templates size themselves to the size of the screen that the person is viewing the email on. So make sure that, you, you know, your, your email looks great in any inbox. Oh. Right, so the reason I'm such a big fan of email marketing is that it's hard to beat. When you look at it um, in relation to um, uh, social media, 91% uh, of their people check their email every day. And like I said, over, over half, half of them, 88% of people check their emails on their smartphones. That's more than social media or videos. So if you read your emails first thing in the morning, type yes in the box, because I know I do. I'm, I'm on my uh, phone checking my emails before I get to my desk. Um, and I make sure that I know what I'm dealing with on that day. Yep, so people are typing yes. So you can see that people actually do read the emails. Email is reliable. It's hard to beat email marketing because it's everywhere these days. Um, everything from updates from your bank or service providers, uh, you know, people are using email and it gets delivered 90 plus percent of the time. Email service providers work really hard with Internet service providers and they work hard to make sure that their their clients emails get delivered. They are what, what's known as whitelisted with ISPs. So services like Google and uh, uh Yahoo, you know, they they look at these email service providers to make sure that they are not they don't have lots of customers that are spamming people. Now, we'd compare that to Facebook posts. So um, I saw something on on LinkedIn today. One of my connections posted about average engagement rates on LinkedIn. So this is not even um, uh, views on LinkedIn. So to just two percent of your fans will see a post. But average engagement rates on LinkedIn are actually dropping as well, which means that people are, are, are spending less and less time engaging with posts. So email marketing is a really important uh, method to use for small businesses to, to get in front of customers and uh, prospective customers. Email marketing has got three times the conversion rate of social media. It just has. The vast majority of people that have, have registered for this webinar came from email. I asked a few of organisations that I know as well that I'm members of, that I'm a member of, to share this um, webinar to their email list, and I I, I set up tra trackable links. Um, so I know that the vast majority of people who registered for this webinar have come from some form of email marketing. So. 
it's really important if you want that conversion rate, if you want people to take an action, um, that you know you you look at email as a way to be able to help you do that. And you know, for every pound that is spent on email marketing, there's an average return of thirty eight pounds. I mean that you know that's a that's a very strong number. Um, if you if you are paying for your email service, and I and I really recommend that you should you should make that investment in your email service. Every every pound that you spend on that, you could make an average of thirty eight pounds back. I like them numbers. So to get the best result the results from your emails, you need to put your readers' interests before your own. Right? It's tempting to keep promoting your business, you know. Um, but you need to make sure that your list is either expects that or they're getting more of the things that they signed up for in the first place. So here are some things that you can do. OK. Focus on being relevant. Make sure that you know what your audience values. OK. And, you know, don't don't assume that you know what they want. As I said, do some research and find out what they want to know about and make sure that you're giving them the, the things that they really value. Figure out how much content is enough, right? We don't we don't like to be reading lots and lots of um, things, like lots and lots of text on our phones. 88% of people open and read emails on their phones. How much scrolling do you want your readers to do? So. Figure out how much content is enough. And, you know, you're busy and your readers are busy. So you, they want you to get to the point really quickly. One of the easiest ways to create content is to turn the questions that you get asked the most into, into that content for your newsletters. So say, for example, you send out a newsletter every month. You might have a little feature in that newsletter um, where uh, you, you might call it the FAQ mailbag or the FAQ post bag. Um, and that's where you answer a question that you get asked all the time. Your readers are going to appreciate that because they probably, you know, have thought about asking you that question. So that's one way to really create content that um, resonates with your readers. Lastly, don't forget that images are content too, right? Pictures of events that you have or you're going to, your products, your team, you, images of the business owner work really well. Make sure that you optimize these for a mobile because um, and that the images don't uh, dominate your content. But, you know, absolutely use images in your emails. And the other tip that I'll give you is that we're kind of like lab rats. We are trained to click on images. So if you are using images on your email, make them go somewhere. Figure out the destination you want people to go to when they click on that image and put a link on it. So that means that you're you're giving them another way that they can take action on your email. So ultimately, when you think about each of these guidelines, consider how your reader would answer. The message you want to convey to them might not be the message that your readers are most willing to respond to. Right. So, like I said, essential to write for your audience and not you. And here's why. 38 percent of people will unsubscribe from emails if they think that the content is boring or irre irrelevant. And when someone unsubscribes from your email, you can't communicate with them again. That's it. They're gone. Unless they sign up for your list again, and if they don't think that your content's worth it, they're not going to, you won't be able to talk to those people again. 32% of people will send irrelevant content to their spam folder. That's, that's, that could really impact how email pro providers like Gmail or Yahoo sort your future messages. If you get a lot of spam reports, your emails will start going to people's spam folders. So make sure that you give your audience the content they want to read rather than what you want them to read. Right, so we're getting close to the 30 ways to grow your list. But before, um, before I start, 
Um, I just need want to show you why someone would join your list. Like, what is it for them? What's in it for them? We that's that's what goes through our heads when somebody says, "Oh, do you want to sign up for my email list?" W without even knowing it, we're thinking, "Well, what's in it for me?" Um, so you know that um, you know what you want to get out of them joining your list, but you need to give people a reason to join. And here are some ideas that that you can use. So perhaps you're going to send them some ongoing education. So my my weekly newsletter is email marketing uh, is marketing tips. So every week um, it's usually a, a link to a blog post, but maybe to an event. It's everything that people want to get in terms of education in marketing their small business. Maybe you've got a VIP group that you want people to join where they they get, you know, maybe the inside track on new products. They get exclusive discounts. Um, any kind of insider news, maybe you're um, a membership organization and, you know, there are any kind of inside track news that people will want to know. Um, perhaps it's an ebook or a white paper, some kind of guide that people want to download. Um, maybe updates, if you're a charity, updates on your mission, updates on your fundraising, um, how things are going, opportunities for people to get involved. Um, um, discounts, who doesn't love a discount? So maybe a family and friends discount that only is available by email. The, the, the discounts will only go out to your email list. You know, these are just a few examples of the types of incentives that you could offer to get someone to subscribe to your mailing list. Now make sure that they're feasible for you to offer and manage and track and that you have the bandwidth to, to, to honor the, the, what, you've, um, what you've offered. Okay, one of my favorite sayings, uh, if, you've, if you've been on, on, on my uh, list growth or email marketing uh, webinars, one of my favorite sayings is, if you don't ask, you don't get. This applies to pe uh, asking people to join your email list. You need to make that ask. So let's break it down, let's get going. I'm gonna now show you 30 ways that you can use to grow your email list. Number one. Back to basics, okay, with a paper sign-up form. It really does work, right? They're convenient at things like trade shows or at um, your counter if you have a, have a shop or a, or a cafe, people can fill in uh, their details. Now, my tip for GDPR here is to have a date printed on the paper so you know when the sign-up happened because you have to have that proof. I would also have, rather than a um, one piece of paper, I'd have slips of paper so that people fill in their details, but only you get to see them. They fill it in on a slip and you put it away somewhere safe. Keep these as a record of the ask to join. Scan them and keep them stored so that you have that record um, and you can prove that people asked to join your list. Number two. So, did you know that 53% of consumers have given their email address to a sales assistant? That's why you want to make sure you or your team, if you have a team, are asking for email addresses. Ask at the point of sale. While a customer is paying, ask them to sign your email list or join the email club. Right? Don't say, do you want to get our newsletter? Can I have your email address? Because at that point in my head, I'm going, no, because you're just going to send me things that I don't want. Would you like member only discounts right to your inbox? Yes, because I shop here a lot and I want member only discounts. So think about how you make that ask. If you're um, if you take lots of calls, it could be in an office or or uh, in a shop, ask over your phone. You know, make sure that you train yourself, your team to, to make that ask at the close of a call. You know, if, if they've done something to make that customer happy, that ask is going to be so much easier. Um, write down, write down how you want to ask people. If you've got a team, give them the words that they need to say so that, that when they ask, when you ask, the answer is yes. You know, you and your employees are uh, the best asset. So if you do have a team, think about running a friendly competition with an incentive to see who can get the most subscribers. You know, so make sure that your employees are armed with the resources and reasons why someone should subscribe. If you, if it's just you in your business, you could set yourself an incentive 
you know, uh, this month I'm, I'm going to get 20 additional people to join my email list. And if I do, I'm going to buy me that pair of shoes that I've seen in the window. So give yourself an incentive that, that to help you get to the point where you're making that ask every time. If you want to grow your email list and your business, it's important to connect your potential clients, customers and members and, and with an easy way to subscribe at the time when their interest is highest, right when they learn about your business or organization. When you registered for this webinar, that was when your interest in me with my content was at the highest. That's why I asked you to join my email list at that point. So, you know, where do the people learn about um, your business? Like, if you're anything like me, you've got friends and family that are advocating for you all the time. So arm them, arm them with the, the tools that they need to get people to join your list. If you've seen people interacting with your content that, that friends or family have shared on social media, go back and say to them, hey, did you know I've got an email list where you can get X, Y, and Z? Why don't you join now? So start off with the people that you know. If you've got a shop, A board signs are brilliant. My, my hairdressers has a A board outside their shop 24 seven that they're open. Um, they're a great and simple, effective way to, to just draw attention and bring traffic into, into your business. But also you can use humor and a play on words. You know, there's no reason why you cannot put something on that A board for people to join your list. Um, a great way to do that is to have um, just a like a short URL that they can go to. Um, or we don't use them very often in this country. They've kind of not caught on, but a QR code that people can just snap and join your list. So, you know, you could use a play, like I said, a play on words or humor to attract people's attention. So, for example, if you're a retail um, business, you could say today's offer, buy two shirts and pay for them both. Or a restaurant, if you're a restaurant, you could say um, on the board, come in, otherwise we both starve. So think about how you can use uh, you know, ways to grab people's attention and get them to, to get on your list. I'm getting in early with this. Every year I take part in Small Business Saturday. Every year I add people to my list. Last year, I think I added about 80 people to my list. And that was through a webinar that I ran. It's a webinar like this and 80 people got added to my list because they said they wanted to hear from me again. So mark this date in the calendar. It's the first Saturday in December and plan what you're going to do. Like I said, I have a webinar in the lead up to that. Um, and if, if you stay on my list, uh, that's that's one of the first places that people hear about it. Um, so you can join that and um, make your plans for Small Business Saturday. But I have to tell you that this is a really huge potential for you to, to add people to your list. I mentioned this in um, Tip two, the the face to face ask, but let's dive a little bit deeper into this idea. So running a competition is a great way to motivate your employees. Um, whoever collects the most email addresses could win a gift, like a gift card or a, a bonus, free lunch, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you know, just make sure that you've armed them with the information that they need to be able to make this happen. As I always already said as well, if it's just you in your lit, in your business, set yourself a goal and decide the reward that you're going to get if you reach that. It's amazing what the promise of something nice is going to do for your own motivation. It works for me all the time. You know, I'm just going to finish this and then I'm going to go downstairs and have a cup of tea and some biscuits. I tell you, that is just motivation for me. Tea and a couple of biscuits does it for me every time. But think about what that motivation is for you. So don't expect people to just sign up. You have to prompt your audience to take action on social media platforms that they interact with you the most. So make an effort, post once a week or uh, you know every couple of weeks, whatever works best with you for you that you know gets people um, 
get gets your email list on people's remind, uh, radars. It reminds them that they'll receive exclusive offers or information or tips or whatever it is that you're sending them. You know, remind them to do that. And you can use various apps to, to get people to sign up um, and, you know, collect these these contact details. So social media, don't rely on your your followers to just keep following you on social media. Like I said, 2% of Facebook fans see posts. So work hard to get those people from your social media onto your email list. And speaking of apps and integrations, um, Constant Contact does have a Join My List app for Facebook. Now, I think quite a lot of the, the uh, major email service providers have this. I know MailChimp does. It's a really easy way to incorporate that sign up um, into your Facebook page. If you go to my Facebook page, you will see my sign up right there um, on the on the left hand side. It says uh, weekly marketing tips. OK, so make sure that you are using this um, facility to really get your Facebook fans onto your email list. Just as images and buttons have a higher conversion rate in emails, the same translates into other parts of marketing as well. We're visual. We like to interact with items that capture our attention. So rather than asking your audience through plain text with just a post, use visual components to get them to act and use that. Use Facebook's call to action button. That's that button that appears under your your Facebook cover. You can change that. You can change it to give um, to go to several different calls of action. And one of those is to join your list. So make sure you're using that button, because when people go to your page, they can actually just join your list straight from that page, that page without actually ever leaving it. So here are a couple of um, facts or stats that you, you may not really know about or, or take into consideration when you're growing your list. So I've, I've mentioned this approximately two percent of your Facebook fans um, organically that's not paid or boosted, will see uh, your posts in their newsfeed, right? Not all of your fans are subscribers or vice versa. So how do we solve um, for both of these issues? Well, convert your Facebook fans into subscribers by sharing your emails onto your page. So you can do that uh, through constant contact with the social share option. You can do that with other email service providers. After an email is sent to you, you in within Constant Contact, you can schedule. You can actually use Constant Contact to schedule your social media posts and you can schedule one or more posts that directly link to the web web version of your email. This not only increases interaction with your post, so your audience will interact with the post, which in turn increases your organic visibility, but it also drives people to see the emails that you send out that they otherwise wouldn't. If they're not on your email list, they're not going to see them. But if you post them to your Facebook page, they get to see what they're missing. Typically, if someone sees your email through a social post but didn't receive it in their inbox, they are more likely to subscribe from the web page version so they don't miss out in the future. OK, that's your problem solved. So make sure you're sharing the web versions of your emails on your social networks. We've talked about this. Two percent of Facebook fans will see your posts organically. So supercharge your social reach by using Boost. It's affordable and it provides insights into uh, views and actions taken. So you can measure what what's happening. You can actually target it at, at a specific audience. So. Remember that if people can see how awesome your ads and emails are, they're more likely to sign up for your list because of the expectation of the quality content that you're going to send them. So it's a good good way to just boost your list. While there are many ways that you can add um, sign up forms to your to your website, such as a button or a link or embedding the form directly on your page, the most uh, directing a embedding a form on your page is the most effective way to collect um, email addresses. 
Um, in fact, statistics show that subscribers um, increase by 52% when a form is embedded versus any other method. Now, I've not done this, and I think I'm going to go back and do this somewhere on my website. So just make sure that you look at that and, and embed your form uh, somewhere on your website where people can easily sign up. Um, best practices tell us to keep the sign up form short and simple. So only ask for uh, information that's absolutely necessary. Remember that you can collect this information further down the line, but the, at the time that you collect this information, the more you ask for, the less likely people are to sign up. Blogs are a fantastic way to humanize your business, to give it a voice and a personality. It's also a great way to be found by um, on organic search on, on search engines. So when you do this, um, you make connections and you build relationships with your audience. So take advantage of this opportunity when you're connecting the most with your audience. And don't just think about your own blog. You can consider guest blogging or commenting or participating in conversations in blog posts just to add a link to your sign up form. So if someone someone, you know, um, comments on your blog post and says how great it is, you can thank them and say, well, you know, I've got way more information than this that I share with my email list. Why don't you sign up with me today? So that's another opportunity for you to grab an email address. Um, just as I've mentioned previously uh, about sharing emails through social share posts, you can also share past emails by, by using your email archive. Um, by directing your audience to a landing page with links to your past emails, they'll be able to see all of the information they're missing out on by not being a part of your list. And we all have FOMO, right? We have fear of missing out and we don't want to be left out. And you can see that in, in that web version of the email, there is a button there right at the top saying, come on, come and join my list. OK, so surveys, they're not exclusively to be used just for customer satisfaction. They're a great way to allow people to vote for and share information with you. So use a survey to collect information to be able to communicate with your audience in the future. A great example of this would be an event waiting list. Now, <laughs> I'm really excited this is in here because when I was at Constant Contact, I did this first off and then I shared it with the product team. <laughs> and I'm absolutely amazed it's made it into a presentation. But what I used to do was create a survey and I used to make that the waiting list so that if my event sold out, rather than just saying, oh, there's there's no more space, people would get sent to a link that said, add yourself to this waiting list. And if a space opens up, we'll let you know. So that's a great way at that point where people are interested in that event that they've added themselves to the waiting list. It's a great way for you to capture their details. So you know, they've, you've got their details and under GDPR, there is a part called legitimate interest. So if they've given you their details to be added to a waiting list, it stands to reason that they might be interested in future events. So you can actually email them about future events. But unless they give you specific permission, you can only email them about future events. It's a great way to get people interested in your business and ask to join your list permanently. Sometimes, um, as business owners, we network, we should network. Um, and sometimes it's, it's the least expected times and places. So we may run into someone who can help our business or we can help them. Um, as a result, we exchange business cards. Um, and in this case, you might want to reverse your strategy, right? Do not add people automatically to your email list if they've given you your business, their business card. They haven't given you permission to market to them, okay? Contact them individually first and remind them of the meeting that you had. Remind them, maybe send them an interesting article that would help them, and then include a sign-up button um, on your uh, email signature and add that add that to your email and because you're building a relationship with that people that person ahead of time they're more inclined to take 
a positive action. I, I have a sign up uh, link on my email signature. It's there permanently. And if I'm talking to someone and, I, and they've asked me for a specific piece of information, I'll give them that information and then I'll say, oh, by the way, if you want to join my email list, there's, just click on that link at the bottom of my email and you'll be added. It's a great way for them to take that action. If your interaction face to face was so impactful and you felt like it was appropriate to ask if they'd like to join your list on the spot, there's an app. So Constant Contact has an app and you can add people to your list through that app. It's another reason why I love um, love Constant Contact. Uh, also, I can scan somebody's business card to add their details, which is amazing. There is a notes section where you can add the date that people asked to join your list. And you can say you met them at such and such event. They have um, agreed to join your list and you can add the date that that happened. So you're covering yourself again that that person absolutely gave you permission to email them. There are text to join tools as well, right? There, you can use those um, and they let you give people a short code to join your list. And you can use these in lots of different places. You could use them at trade shows, um, on you know shop counters, in windows, like I said, A boards as well. Um, use an email, uh, use a text tool that integrates with the email service uh, provider that you use. Um, I know that Fire Text integrates with Constant Contact and it does with a, a few other email service providers. Making sure that integration is there means that you don't waste time moving data from one place to another. It does it automatically for you. In addition to text to join, you can have scan to join. A QR code is um, a really fun, easy way for, for more tech savvy subscribers to join. So just a click of a button, you can um, generate a QR code um, within uh, with a specific uh, code to, to design links to a specific list. Um, and wherever you put it, people can scan that and they can be added to your list. They just tap in their details. They get taken to a landing page, they tap in their details and um, they get added to your list. Old school time. Uh, Sometimes, it's, you know, there's something to be said about something that's simple and classic, um, and especially for subscribers who aren't quite ready to jump on that tech train. You know, ease them into email marketing with a more traditional way of subscribing, like using a brochure. You can easily create a short link using Bitly or Google that is memorable, and you can add it to um, to a brochure. I have a bit link, Bitly link on my business cards for people to, to join my list. Cool. Okay, if you're a restaurant or a cafe owner, don't forget about your menu. Have a code, QR code, the text to join, so people can really easily sign up. Also works for service-led businesses at expos. If you're at a business expo, you have a stand, QR code, text to join, a really simple way for people to take action there and then. Talking about trade shows and conferences, other networking events where you'd like to collect contact information quickly and easily. So a great way to do that is to have a, a tablet. There is, um, this is an app that specifically works with Constant Contact, but there are loads of list gathering, uh, list growth apps out there. So you can use that really easily um, at a trade show, at a, um, uh, shop counter where people can just tap in their details. Uh, you can do away with the bits of paper. Another place that you can add, ask people to join your list. Right? If you're if you're sending out orders to customers or using things like takeout boxes, bags, whatever it is, put a way on there for people to join your list. QR code, text to join. You're missing an opportunity if you don't use these um, these places because this is another touch point that you're coming into contact with people at a time where they're happy to see whatever it is that they've got from you. So take that opportunity to ask them to join your list. Event registration. So if you host events, uh, you'll have a registration page. Make sure that you give people the option to join your list from that page by including a tick box. This is another reason I love Constant Contact is that they have their own event registration tool. Once people have ticked that box, it automatically 
puts them into the list that I have specified. So check if your email service provider has a similar tool. This is just a great way because at the time that people are going, this is great, this is an amazing event. Yes, of course I wanna hear more from these people. They're gonna join your list. Have a loyalty program. That's a great way to entice people to join your list. So at the time that they take a card or however, however you're devising your loyalty program, tell them that members of the program get special offers by email and ask if they'd like to receive those offers. Everyone loves to feel special, everyone loves to feel like a VIP, and if I'm getting the chance to get something that other people aren't, yes, I'm going to sign up. Birthday emails are not only a great way to remind your customers, your clients, your members that you care, but it builds a more meaningful and personal relationship with your audience. Plus, people like to get them. It's like opening a virtual birthday present, right? I'm, I love pizza. Um, and I, I know that um, ZZ's has my birthday. I must have given it to them at some point. I must have joined their birthday club because they, they every year around the time of my birthday, I get an email from them saying, hey, come in, bring, bring you know, you come in and you get this for free if you bring in another three people. So they're generating business. They're giving me something for free for my birthday, which feels great. Um, but I have, to, I have to take additional people with me to uh, be able to access that offer. It's a great way to offer some goodies um, in the future. So think about a birthday club. Um, I know Hannah is on here. Hannah runs the pet shed in Brighton. You could have a pet birthday club. Just putting it out there. Um, do you have a busy website or do you struggle to direct traffic, um, your direct your website traffic to the subscription button? So experiment with different types of landing pages and pop-ups to make you really stand out. Um, Constant Contact has some fantastic integrations with companies like Hello Bar. I use Hello Bar on my website. It's a brilliant pop-up um, tool that really helps you target um, your audience on your website. Um, I, I'm i like a majority of the people that, prob that are on this. I, but you probably think I hate pop-ups. Um, I hate pop-ups when they happen when I'm two seconds on a website and I just like things just pop up everywhere and I want to get rid of them because I want to read the thing that I want that I've come there for. So with my pop-ups, I set them up so that they they happen when a person is about to leave my website. And with Hello Bar, you can do that. It's called an exit intent. And uh, when somebody decides they're going to leave your website, it pops up and it says it gives you an offer. You, you create what the offer is and you ask for people's email address. And Hello Bar is completely GDPR compliant. So people ha there will be a tick box on there that people tick to be able to be added to your email list. Okay, empty tick boxes, okay? GDPR uh, specifies that you cannot use pre-ticked boxes anywhere online payment forms, anywhere online, they have to be empty. But make sure that everywhere you're online, you are you have those empty tick boxes that people can um, can opt into. And when when they people are buying things and they're happy with your service, they're more likely to, to want to join. When you're booking appointments or consultations, Email addresses are almost necessary to collect. You know, blame it on that confirmation. You're going to need to communicate with people to make sure that that you're, you know, you make that meeting or you um, agree where you're going to meet, whatever it is. This is a really great place to offer people a convenient way to join your email list at the time where they're booking that appointment. Number thirty, we're here at, at the end. Um, the number one reason people submit their email address is because they know they'll receive something in return. It's kind of the old, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours complex. So give people what they want. Providing exclusive information to people who subscribe to your list is not only going to get them to sign up, but it's going to help them to stay on your list too. 
Now, one of the features I think is a massive game changer in constant contact for small businesses is being able to incorporate trackable coupons into your emails to send out. That means you'll know who actually redeemed that coupon. So think about how you can use that as a way to offer new subscribers a discount or some, some kind of offer that they redeem in store or online and add an extra bonus for people who share with their friends. Well, that was a whistle stop tour of how to grow your list. I hope that you found at least five things that you can use and you're ready to get started straight away. Now, whilst growing your list is really important, having an engaged list is even more important. Sending emails out that no one reacts to is a waste of your time and your money. You want your readers to take action. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the number one reason for unsubscribing is irrelevant content. And there's a knack to getting your emails opened and then for readers to take action. Now, if you're thinking that your emails could perform better, then let me review the last three. I'll go through them and I'll let you know the changes that you should make to get a better response. You can book using the link on the slide. And once you've booked, I'll, I'll let you know the next steps. And while you're putting your list growth tips into action, I'll give you my expert advice on how to make your emails irresistible. Right, so I'm going to leave this slide up and I'm going to go to the questions and let's see what people have asked. Let me scroll down and have a look and see what questions there are. Okay. Uh, I think it's important to, so this is Annie, she's put, I think it's important to build your list of people who are interested in your brand and products rather than signing up for winning competitions. Do you advocate running competitions to increase subscribers? How many times a week would you recommend? Okay, so I think competitions are a good way, they're one way of um, growing your list. Um, if you make the competition specific to the type of people that you you want to attract, then it will work and you will get interested subscribers. So for example, um, uh, right when I started, I had a client who would, every year they would do a massive giveaway with so many prizes, um, you know, TVs, games consoles, all of that kind of stuff. And they would get professional, com you know, professional competition enterers um, entering that competition who had no interest in their products. But if you think about what your audience needs, wants, and you give away something that is relevant to them, you will get relevant people um, entering the competition. Um, the next thing, how many times a week would you recommend emailing your base? I recommend telling your base how many times you will email them and with what, and then sticking to that. I think if you try, if you email people too many times um, a week, if, if you have a daily email, if you're, if you're sending daily tips, tell people up front they're gonna get an email every day, but make it short. So don't, don't bombard your list, make, set the expectation and follow through with that. Um, Instagram is full of other businesses promoting themselves. They do not find customers, only competitors. Um, that's again, that's from Annie. Uh, it, it depends on how you use social networks with any social network. Again, um, if, if all you're doing is promoting yourself, you will put people off, but if you're adding value, then it won't. Um, can we have the 30 points by email if possible, not the slides, but just the points as I miss out. Yes, so um, as I said at the beginning of the webinar, this is being recorded. Um, so everyone is going to get a recording of the webinar um, in the next couple of days. <clears throat> and um, so you'll be able to go through that as, as uh, at your leisure. Um, and I know people are listening whilst they're working. I know that as small business owners, we don't have the luxury of, um, giving our full attention all the time. 
A uh, couple of other questions. How do I put signups on my website? So there's there's a number of different ways that you can do that. Um, you can, depending on your email software, they'll, they'll provide you with the links or that they'll help you create buttons. You can use the embeddable form um, on your website. Uh, if you struggle, then um, either talk, if you have a web designer, talk to your web designer or get in touch with your email service provider so that they can help you through that. Um, where should I put a box on my website? So um, I would look at your Google Analytics and see what the most popular pages are and perhaps put an embeddable form on those pages. But I would give people the option to sign up to your list in whichever area they are on your website. So if you go to my website, you'll see my sign up button is on my main menu and it follows people around my website because I don't know which page they're going to come into my website and I don't know which page they're going to leave. So I give them the option um, every part of the website that they're in. Uh, what was the pop-up tool you mentioned? Um, it's called Hello Bar. Let me just, I'll give you a link to it in, uh, oh, let's just see, I think, what I'll do is I'll include it in the email. I haven't actually got it up and ready. So I'll include the link to Hello Bar in the in the um, email that I send out. Um, why, somebody's just asked why they should put an unsubscribe on their emails. So number one reason, because GDPR says that you have to. As I understand it, every single email has to have an unsubscribe. You have to give people an easy way to leave your email list. Um, email service providers will do that for you automatically. So uh, uh, Constant Contact, MailChimp, uh, Vertical Response, all of those people have the facility to have to include unsubscribes directly into your email. And I know with Constant Contact, you don't have the option to take it off. It is standard. Um, the other thing is, is that it makes people feel a little bit more secure knowing that they can leave on when they want to on their terms, which kind of means that they don't go. Um, it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but people feel safer um, handing over their details, um, knowing that they can leave whenever they want. Uh, I oh. I need to collect lots of details um, so that I know more about my readers. What do you suggest? So I, I did say that if you if you try and collect too much information in the sign up box, people get annoyed, um, they're impatient and they leave. So collect only the bare essentials. Um, and then um, what you can do is once you've done that, you can have a survey that you send out to people with information that the other information that you want from them. So perhaps, you know, you might collect the I mean, I only ever really collect the first name and their email address. Um, and then um, I either do a bit of research and find out more about them, like perhaps if, I, if, if it's possible where they are in the country so that I can target them with more geographical things. Or um, I will send out any, you know, you can send out a survey asking, like, if you're going to run a birthday club, send out a, an email after they've joined saying, hey, we, we've got a birthday club. We'd love to send you a present on your birthday. Tell us when it is. So get get the bare essentials so that people um, don't get impatient and leave and then get the the more details that you want. Get that later. Um you mentioned a, a text code. Yeah, so text code, text to join, it's called. Um, I, the the company that I know is Fire Text. They're a UK company. Um, they, they're all based here uh, in the UK. Um, so what you can do is set up a short code. So you give people a short code. Um, they text their name and email address to that code. And because FireText integrates uh, with Constant Contact, it will automatically add people to the list that you've specified. It works the other way too. So you can, um, the data transfers both ways. So the FireText bit will put 
data into your constant contact account. But when you collect people's um, details, when they sign up for your list, you could say, you know, you could on the sign up form, you could say, you know, join our exclusive text club or something like that and get their mobile number. And constant contact will put the mobile number into fire text. So it's a really easy way for you to move that data around because it does it automatically. Um, and um, a great way for you to give people, encourage them to join your list in, uh, in, in an easy way because you can put that text code in lots of different places and who doesn't have their mobile phone with them most of the time. So they can join at that point. Okay. I think we're out of questions. Um, I'm so glad that you decided to join me uh, for this webinar. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be sending the recording in the next couple of days, so watch out for that. Um, the email will also have offer uh, details of this email review offer. I'd love to help you get better results with your email marketing. Um, you're going to get a little short survey before you go um, leave this webinar. I'd really appreciate it if you could take the time to reply. This, it will take you no more than a couple of minutes. But thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope to see you on my next webinar. Take care and have a great day.